so you kind of touched on a little bit, but how is how does someone get tested for flu? I mean, is it based on symptoms? Is there actually like a swab? Like, how does that work? Yeah. So many people watching this may be familiar with the home test kit, kits that are available. There's many over-the-counter home test kits. There's not very many, if not at all, uh, home test kits for all the cold viruses that are out there, including flu. So you walk into a CVS or Walgreens and you pick up a Binax, you can swab your nose and see if you have COVID. You walk into one of those things, you can have a home test kit for HIV. You walk into those stores, you can get a home pregnancy test. Um, it would be worthwhile to have these sort of testing kits at large for everybody. So therefore, oh, I have the sniffles, it's not allergies, but I have parainfluenza virus, or I have influenza, or I have one of the other coronaviruses. And on the box it says, if you test positive for this, don't go into work, we would really be able to nip a lot of these things in the bud. Be a lot of people <clears throat> not in work. Right? I know, yeah, and so I think Americans in general are like, you know, I'm just gonna work through this. And I think we've been doing fairly okay because the mortality or the death rate from these illnesses are always at this lowish level until they start to rise in which, oh my God, we've got a pandemic and we have to really damp down a lot of that. So the testing for flu, <clears throat> most of it in the community is symptoms. You can make a presumptive diagnosis that somebody has it. But when you walk into the uh, emergency room or your doctor's office, we have um, in-office testing kits, which give you results within 15 minutes to four hours, depending on what type of test that's there. Um, at the place that I work, every patient is admitted with swabs to test for four major viruses, influenza A, influenza B, respiratory syncytial virus, and COVID. And the reason why that's being done <clears throat> is also to make sure that the person in room four doesn't have one of those of a mild extent because we don't have, want to have a mini outbreak in the hospital. That's been the, the norm post-COVID simply because you do not want to get an infection that you didn't have when you walked through the door and get it in the hospital. The same thing can apply for the way you surveil nursing homes and so forth. <clears throat> so if you have symptoms and you seek medical attention, then testing can be done. Long story short, testing is only recommended for the most part if it will alter management. So one example is, do I need to know that you've got flu or can I still treat you as if you have flu, but I'm not 100%? If your presentation is suggesting that maybe you've got something that is a bit atypical for flu, <clears throat> or I'm considering treating you with antibiotics, which don't work for the flu, but do work for secondary bacterial infections, I need to gather more data. So from a clinician standpoint, the ma vast majority of people that have flu out there that never see a provider think they have the flu. They probably had the flu, but it could have been something else. But most of the surveillance that's occurring is within doctor's offices and emergency rooms to get that sense of how much of it is in the community. So testing in general <clears throat> is not available for the most part to at-home testing kits, but it can certainly be part of your um, diagnostic testing when you see somebody. Hey folks, connecting with your benefits is our primary mission and the SITREP is providing more options than ever. Subscribe to our free email newsletter, subscribe to our audio podcast channel, or subscribe to our content on YouTube. For details and links, check out the description below.